Fourth species counterpoint occurs when you introduce syncopation. Now, syncopation is where we place the stress of the music on the offbeat rather than on the onbeat. In practice, this would look something like this. So we've got our fixed melody playing at the beginning of the beats, every beat, and our counterpoint playing on the offbeat, therefore introducing syncopation purely by the fact that they're not actually playing at the same time at all. Now, here are a few guidelines for composing melodies in fourth species counterpoint. The counterpoint melody should resolve downwards by a step. This is also known as suspension. So here we are going up in pitch. We're skipping up a few intervals. However, then we're going down and then we're going down again. This is known as suspension. Now, avoid using more than eight suspensions recurringly. So here I'm using one, two, and then we're repeating and going back up. Because the more you use, the less interesting it sounds. And of course, the more suspensions you use, the further down you go in pitch. And you don't want to get too low. Eventually, you'd be more than an octave below what you started with. Consonant intervals can be used as much as you like without restraining this, simply because you won't be playing it alongside at the same time as the actual fixed melody. Therefore, because of this syncopation occurring, use as many consonant intervals as you like. One guideline is to avoid using dissonant intervals on the offbeats. Again, I don't like this guideline. I think dissonant intervals on the offbeats can sound fairly good, especially if you're making something like techno music or psytrance music, which it's good if it sounds a little bit dark. So keep that in mind. The style of music, whether you want to make your melodies sound a little bit dark or happy, can also dictate whether you use more consonant or more dissonant intervals. Now, a couple more. Don't use unisons or octaves too much. And the counterpoint melody must begin with a half rest. A rest basically means you won't play a note for a specific period of time. So this is a half rest, which is half the length of the fixed melody. Now let's have a listen to what this fourth species counterpoint sounds like. I'm going to loop it. I'll have it so that you can see both and I'll solo the bass and the melody. Now that sounds great, but again, using just fourth species counterpoint can be a little bit bland if it's all exactly the same. We can actually mix this up quite easily. So over here, I'm going to change it to first species counterpoint. And here I'm going to go from here to here. have this on so that I can audition the notes. I'm going to try this. And now I'm using a combination of four species, of second species, and of first species over here. Now this is also known as fifth species counterpoint. You see, fifth species counterpoint is purely just all the other different types of counterpoints being mixed together into one counterpoint melody. And this is the way that I would advise, that I would push you to try and compose your music. Because in this way, you can come up with something generally more interesting than sticking to one individual type of species. By the same token, there are certain genres where it benefits you to stick to one certain type of species. Study the genre you want to make music in, really 
try to identify what kind of counterpoint species they are using and replicate them in your own productions. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.